I think it's. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbors. Covet your own. Hello, folks. I'm going to address you in a very monotone manner because Paul failed to pick up on his cue to start us. <laughs> so, That's hey, I'm Jeff usual. Gonzalez. Paul with ARFCOM. Right. So here we go. Listen, here's what we have today. We're going to be talking about a new product from Vortex, something we're very excited about. It's going to be hitting the market here very soon, so make sure you're following. What is it that we're looking at, Paul? The Strike Eagle 1 to 8. But... Now it's in first vocal plane. So let's go and let's do a tooth to tail rundown on the specs. So the first thing we have is that this bad boy is a one to eight by 24. It's a 30 millimeter tube, which I prefer these days, mm -hmm. particularly if I'm gonna be doing any of the close range stuff. Um, it has, as Paul mentioned, a shift from the second vocal plane that you typically see in the Strike Eagle line to the first vocal plane. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious to see kind of like, you know, how the world embraces this change because apparently the Strike Eagle was very, very popular it in was. second focal plane. Mm -hmm. So now we'll see. I think it's going to be hugely popular. It's I agree. It's easier to use, honestly, and I think it makes sense for most people. Easy is subjective. Easy is subjective. Yeah. Moving on. It's also an illuminated reticle. So it's got 11 settings. Mm -hmm. um, turn it up to 11. Turn it up. Dial it up. Right, that's where we're going with that. Um, the eye relief for this is also kind of nice because it's <clears throat> from other scope models in their product line. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's about it's almost half an inch mm -hmm. improved. So you went from 3. like three point five to three point nine. Yeah, so it's pretty decent in that sense. And I like that because that just means that I can be an idiot and still get inside, <laughs> get behind my box, get inside my eye box, and still be able to see my reticle. So I'm I'm hugely I'm hugely enamored with big eye relief. Mm -hmm. All right, wait, wait, wait. That's going to be the big the, wait. Yeah, so picked up a little bit. So little we bit. so when we were, you know, in the previous models, we were looking at about seventeen ounces, and now we're looking at about twenty three nine, twenty four. Yeah. In other yeah. words, so she's a little hefty, but uh, she's got some uh, some <laughs> beef to her. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So the uh, the other thing is that they changed out the reticle, so they went with their enhanced. Battle reticle, mm -hmm. which um, you know I like. It's a great BDC type reticle. You know I think in this day and age, those that understand how to use the BDC are going to be well. Those that know how to use the BDC and then actually put the BDC into use are going to really gain some advantages from this mm -hmm. because not everybody understands how to use the BDC and everybody gets wrapped around. Well, it's not set for my bullet caliber. Uh, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. And it's very similar to the previous reticle. So if you it already is have a Strike Eagle and you're looking to upgrade, it looks very much the same mm -hmm. to me, and that's good. All right, so another big change that we saw in this is the graduation. So we went from a half MOA to a quarter MOA. So the ability to be fairly fine mm -hmm. in your adjustments is pretty, impress pretty, pretty impressive. So that's kind of like a tooth to tail specs. There's a lot of other things out there about this particular unit, of details that we didn't cover, but those are kind of like the big yeah. things that people look for when they're looking for a new product. Mm -hmm. right. So. Let's talk about the performance behind this thing. Okay. We started off by doing some, you know, classic zeroing. You know, we went in and we just got it dialed in for windage to see kind of how it looked. Um, you know, I was only at about four power when I was doing that. I think you said you were at. I, th I went full. Yeah, you went all in. Yep. That's 100%. it. 100%. See, I like to kind of like ease into it. Eh. You just are like ram. Yep. Right 100%. In there. Man. Man. So abusive. So, um, but what I'm looking for when I'm doing that is just, you know, I, I want to quickly be able to get my windage dialed okay. in decent enough so uh -huh. that when we start to step back, I'm not worried so much about mm -hmm. my elevation, I'm sorry, my windage. So that was great. We went out, and this is another nice thing about this particular optic is that it's got a 50 slash 200 zero for mm -hmm. that BDC. So the way the BDC is designed, instead of zeroing at 100, which is very, very, very common mm -hmm. with any magnified optic, we zeroed at the 50, and then we pushed out and confirmed that zero at the 200. Mm -hmm. So that has to do with the flight path of the bullet, making it, you know, trying to take, it, it's, it's really nice to see, <clears throat> because in the, um, you know, the red dot yeah. world, it's all about, you know, the 50, 100, or the 200. Exactly. And so these guys, and the reason why the 50 and the 200 are so popular is because of that flight path mm -hmm. 
taken advantage of something that's out there. These guys have done that with that BDC, which is why I think that BDC is going to really come into its own. I think, I think people are going to really appreciate what that brings to the table. Mm -hmm. Um, now, the one thing that does suck about something like that is that you have to have 200 yards to get that thing really dialed in. Because even though 50 true, is true. technically defined as that initial intersection, you really want this thing, if you're going to do any long-range work, to be dialed at two. Which we were lucky because yep. we had to, and we were able to go to go what, 400. That's right, 400. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing that I would say about uh, you know the BDC real quick while we're talking about performance mm -hmm. is that like this this was designed around. Uh, was it a 60 grain bullet? Five, five, six, Correct. 60 yep. grain bullet, about 3,200 feet per second, I think is what it was. So, folks, real quick, when you see something like that, don't freak out because you are not shooting 60 grain, right? It, the, the, the bottom line is that those, all of those BDC markers are going to be uh, interpreted by you and your performance and what you're working with. So, if you don't have 60 grain, the important thing is that whatever you have, you zero with it, and then you go and you shoot at those different yard lines, those different stadium lines, to figure out, okay, what is this hitting at? So instead of it being exactly at three, maybe with this grain bullet at right. this velocity, it's mm -hmm. only 275. Mm -hmm. All right, and then you, you keep pushing out, and you learn, okay, well, these stadium lines are now corresponding to a different yard line than what is the factory recommend, you know, factory settings, which is fine because. Part of being able to use this, we this weapon system, what this weapon system with the optic, well, is knowing how to use that reticle. And so if you understand that, okay, my reticle is not exactly at 300 or 400, it's at these distances shooting this ammo, then the most important thing that you take away is the ability to be consistent. Mm -hmm. That's the key, is that I'm using the same exact hole for each of those yard lines, and I know now where my bullet impacts. So that's the beautiful thing about it. So from there, as Paul mentioned, we took that we took the opportunity to go all the way out to 400, which was awesome. That no, was a blast. Yeah, it's it's not every day that you get to push out to 400. Um, and my observations. We even had an Uber driver come and pick us up. This is true. Targets. It was, this is true. We we're so spoiled. We are that rather than walk all the way down to the targets, we had an Uber driver come get us. Well, it's either that or our company doesn't pay its you know video staff enough that they have to side hustle for Uber. But hey, hey, you know. <laughs> Uber? No? Yeah, 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 be right down. It worked for us. Worked Who cares? Out. It Who cares out. about them? They don't matter, <laughs> right? Uber driver, Taylor, we, I'm sorry. Just, you're we along for you. the ride. We love you, Tay Tay. Mm. Mm. <laughs> All right, so one of the things about going out to the long range was we got a chance to use the BDC. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, that was fun because now, so why, why, why use a BDC? Why use a hold as opposed to dialing up? You could certainly dial up. These reticles, I'm um, sorry, these adjustment turrets are really well designed. I like how audible and tactile they are. Once we dial this into zero, and once we know what that come up is at that distance, can I dial? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. If time permits, it's, it's fine. Because if you can dial in, the benefit of being able to dial in is that you have the more consistent reticle that you're looking at. So you're looking at basically the, right. the crosshairs, right? right? That's what you use the most. It becomes much more easier, a little bit more consistency there, so fine. But where time does not permit that, that is where the BDC comes in. Or another thing, again, most people are probably not going to have to deal with this, is targets at various distances, right? Right. So when I'm looking out at my battlefield and I got 400 yards to play with and I got targets scattered all over that, mm -hmm. I don't have the time to keep dialing in. I got a right. target at four, then I got a target that pops up at three, right. and then I got one that pops up at the 175. So I've got to be able to quickly know what those holds are in order to make those shots at the different targets distances. The BDC kind of eliminates all of that by just going, oh, okay, that's my four, that's my three, that's my two, or 175, somewhere in between. Right. Boom. Yeah. And easy to use. I mean, it's just, it's there. not rocket science. It, yeah. It's not. No. It's not rocket science. All right. So then from there, the long range, which, um, which again, I had so much fun doing. We went and we started playing with it at close range. Mm -hmm. So obviously the benefit of a low power variable optic is try to do some dual roles here. Right. 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 So um, I mean, my, you can, obviously it's, you know, reaching out 
those longer distances with a red dot, <laughs> it's kind of a crapshoot, mm -hmm. right? So being able to have that run it at one x, you know, with the with the additional eye relief that it has, it has that dual purpose role, and that's most people what are that they're going to purchase this for, right? That or maybe competition, but yeah. Well, the nice thing about the dual role is that you know it's it is just that it's it's solving multiple problems. Mm -hmm. What you've got to realize is that. It's going to do both those. It's going to solve both those problems well enough. Right. It's not going to excel. Mm -hmm. Right. It's going to excel in one area. So in other words, this is going to excel at the longer ranges, and it's going to do okay at the close ranges. Mm -hmm. Whereas the red dot that you mentioned is going to do really good excel, at the close yeah. ranges and not so good at long ranges. So you got to just look at it from those two different perspectives. And I like being able to bring low power variable optics into the realm because it does help to offer some advantages to active distances. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't say some, a lot of advantages. Oh, yeah. A lot of advantages. Um, the, eye, the eye relief makes it a lot friendlier mm -hmm. to use at that close range where you've really got to snap up into a good quick mount and be able to deliver multiple rounds. You know, sometimes firing one round under you know a tighter eye box, you can get away with. But when you have to do rapid fire, and yep. now that gun is recoiling, yep. the the smaller eye box is going to make it a lot harder. In other words, you as a shooter have to work a lot harder. Right. You got to work a lot harder to do that. And if you want to try to see some semblance of the same splits between what you might do with a red dot, blah 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 blah. blah. So the close range stuff for me was was good. I mean, you know, it's it's living up to the expectation that I have for something at that close range. I still would like to see, and we'll talk about this as far as an issue, mm -hmm. even though it had 11 seconds. Very special because if you can see, yeah, the numbers all go to 11. Means as far as the illumination is concerned, it just wasn't. Could, as it could have had maybe just a little bit more. Yeah, it, it's, I would have liked to have seen like a super bright. Right. I mean it. In, in like if I'm going to be using it, obviously it's not daytime like like a red dot, and that's right. the problem. You know, you're you're trying to like you're trying to bring make something into exactly, what it's not. Exactly, exactly. So yeah, maybe one more setting of brightness mm -hmm. I think would have been really good because our lighting conditions that we had were what I would consider to be kind of like ideal, pristine days, beautiful yeah. blue sky, you know. Semi, you know, warm temperatures, so it was like as good as it could get. Mm -hmm. If we're looking at maybe some cloud cover or maybe even hours of diminished light, then yeah, the illumination is probably going to be fine. Definitely sufficient at that point. Uh, you know, I, I, I felt like I had a pretty good. I was able to follow it fairly well, mm -hmm. um, but there were a few times where. Well, I didn't quite pick it up as quickly as I'd like because of that lack of illumination. And, right? and so, you know, again, when I go, to, so, you know, when I'm using this as a magnified optic, I am super intensely focused on the right. reticle, mm -hmm. right? When I'm trying to use it as a red dot, I'm super focused on the target. And so I only see it with my periphery. So that diminished, you know, it wasn't diminished per se, but because it just was not as bright as what I'm accustomed to try to shoot fast, it was um, noticeable. Like I had to slow things down to get a better, you know, to be sure right. of where my reticle was or where my dot was when I wanted to go. So that's like my, that was like probably in the performance thought, the performance area. That was my, my biggest holdup was like, oh, one more, one more. That's all I need, one more. Um, what other issues did you have? For me, not your <laughs> issues, Paul. Oh, okay. Not your issues. Okay. This, this item. Well, I have a lot of issues. That's but, what I'm saying. I'm trying uh, to keep you on task. Wow. Well, okay. Keep you on task. On task. Uh, I, I really, uh, honestly, not much. I, I really didn't like the throw lever as it kept falling <laughs> off. Um, mm. Mm. So just so everybody knows, the um, you, you, it comes with a add-on feature that allows you to quickly adjust the um, magnification here. So it's nice in the sense that, you know, it's kind of gives you a little bit more leverage to do that. I like mm -hmm. it because it's very quick. Yeah. Um, but I mean, as far as moving that it, it, it's, it's smooth. It does. It, it's not very it's, difficult it, to it move. Really, it really, you don't, it doesn't require, I, there's some optics out yeah. there where, man, you got to reef on it. So here's the thing. All this right. was nice. This, this is, is easy. Let, right? Let's put it in perspective here. Okay. So that's on one power. Mm -hmm. Even with the lever all the way over here, it doesn't have enough range of motion to go all the way to eight. You're still right. going to have to reset your hand to get mm -hmm. it to eight mm -hmm. if you started at one. Right. 
So, you know, you're not, mm, you know, it's like, okay, it is nice, but... Uh, like, it's not necessary. It's a nice feature that for them to add it in there. I wish they would have possibly had some kind of, you know, cut out here for, for it not to slide. Because that's the issue, really, is that, yeah. you know, there, there's it's rounded edge. So when I caught it on something, it ended up sliding it's off. It just slid and, right off. And then you sounded like a Jenga truck <laughs> from Afghanistan. Those of you know what I'm talking about, you know. Don't be a Jenga truck. Don't be that Jenga truck. All right, so... Um, yeah, that was a, that was something that was, I I saw that and I didn't even bother to install it. Nope. Yeah, yeah. I uh, wanted to be I'm cool, glad. so I did. What? Well, well, you you weren't cool. <laughs> I, well, I was you cool were... for a little bit, Jeff. Just leave me be. Let me be cool, damn it. Well, you might have been cool if being cool was the opposite of cool. If peeing your pants is cool, consider me Miles Davis. Oh, that was the grossest thing I've ever heard in my life. Let's go. I'm gonna say that wasn't a sick burn, and uh, <laughs> let's, so, let's throw some sick burns in the comments. Stats. So uh, okay, so let's talk about um, like I, as far as issues uh -huh. were concerned, I really didn't see any other major issue except for the weight. Yeah, it's a little bit heavier. So uh, you know, I mean, it you're get, but here's the thing, mm -hmm. you know, it's a balancing act. Yeah, right. We're we're balancing. New features that we're trying to get, right? Mm -hmm. First focal plane, mm -hmm. which in my opinion probably is for a general purpose mid-range rifle system, probably where you want to go, first mm -hmm. focal plane. It does give you a lot of advantages that yeah. you know people can, there's so many other videos that you can watch about that subject. So am I, was it worth it for me to get that extra weight for the first focal plane? And in this case, yeah, I would I like so. that. I would like that. So, um, you know, and what does that really mean? What does added weight to the optic mean, well, it added weight to the overall rifle package. Mm -hmm. So if you're shooting supported, say from a bipod, or maybe you're up against some sort of, you know, designed, you know, like maybe a, a barricade or a wall, and you can support mm -hmm. yourself there, it's really maybe not, not that big of no, an issue, it's not. right? It's when you've got to snap up and you've got to try to take a precise shot, maybe at the kind of like the extended ranges of your skill level, that's where you're really going to see it. Because that means that, you know, that wobble is right. just going to, it's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So I'm always trying to go lighter. Right. I'm not trying to go heavier. So that was one of my big issues was I just wish it had a little less weight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just a little. Just a little. All right. So let's, let's, let's go ahead. Did you have anything else? No. Okay. No. So let's go ahead and summarize. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of go through like three plus a mystery kind of tech or, or a mystery um, level, I guess. Or we're just gonna, we're gonna factor. Gr we're going to grade this on there four we categories. Go. We're going to grade it on four categories. New grading system launched today. Congratulations! You Thank are you. the first test subjects. <laughs> so let, let's talk. Let's yes. talk about. So, from my perspective, my summary on the price, mm -hmm. love it. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's I mean, I, I would give it a three. On a yeah. one to three, I'd give it a three because of that price three. point is really sweet. Mm -hmm. Now, on the weight issue, I would probably give that only a one just because weight to me is big. I'd say two. It's not yeah. as much of an issue for me. Yeah. I probably would, you know, yeah. use the bipod a lot of the time. Um, I'm not going to be carrying it and shooting long distance too often. In true. That position. So true, true. for me, I mean, it's not as much of an issue. That makes perfect sense. Um, features, I, I would give that a, a big three as yep. well. I mean, going to that first focal plane made a huge difference for me. So you know, and from my perspective, you know, that's that's a big thing. So you know, it's not bad. I mean, like on 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 those first three, I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it. You know, like a like a seven. Yeah, so that's pretty good. You're gonna give it an eight. So yeah, that's not I bad. I like now, how he gave it my three. Automatically, Jeff, you didn't even ask that I gave it a three. You just assumed that I gave it a three on features. Did I really? You did. This is how wait, much wait, wait, my wait, wait, opinion wait. means to him. No, no, no. I'm reading your mind. Oh, shit. Okay. okay. Well, he did read my mind. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm going to save the fourth graded criterion to, to Paul since this is, this is his, his fun one. All right. Um, I'm going to give it five out of five imitation crab meats. Five out of five imitation crab meats. I would like to say what the f <laughs> but I feel like this is supposed to be a family-oriented video, so I'm going to refrain from that because, really, Paul, you. what can the you?
anywhere. Imitation crab meat. Yeah. Five out of five. There are so many things wrong with that. Mm -hmm. So many things. Five so out you, of five. So five out of five imitation crab meats. On a Go scale buy of one, one on a scale of one to three, which was our agreed upon mm -hmm. criterion. Paul is elected to go one to five on his crab meat. Mm -hmm. Imitation crab meat. Yep. Fair enough. Crab meat approved. Go get your Vortex Strike Eagle. Very well. Available today. In summation. We already summarized. In second summation. <laughs> in second summation, Vortex Strike Eagle. One to eight. First focal plane. Much good. Jeff, passing it off to you. I'm still a little hung up on the imitation crab meat. It's still kind of lingering in my brain, but I really liked it. It turned out to be a pleasant surprise. Uh, I try to keep an open mind when I'm doing this, so you know I'm not sure what direction I'm going to go, and I went in a very positive direction, so I'm really good with that. What I'm not good with is imitation crab meat. I don't know what to think about that, Paul. I'm still a little upset, but folks, seriously, this thing is coming out today. Make sure you check it out. If you're interested in that first focal plane at a good price point, this is your baby. Mm -hmm. And extra crab meat. Imitation, though. Sorry. <laughs> you can't even nail your own joke. <laughs> Catch you next time. Ugh.